do. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever seen The Soloist. It's about a man, the life story of a man by the name of Nathan Ayers. Nathan Ayers lives in Los Angeles, California, and he has schizophrenia. Now, in the movie that portrays his life, Jamie Foxx plays Nathan Ayers, and Robert Downey Jr. portrays uh, this unlikely man, a newspaper man, who comes along and becomes a friend to Nathan Ayers. Jamie Foxx plays that mentally ill and homeless man, and, and in one scene, as he's portraying Nathan, he is in the skin row, he's getting ready to lay down for her to go to, go to sleep, and here he is on the streets laying down, and as he lays down to fall asleep, as he typically does, he begins to recite the Lord's Prayer. So here he is, and his words should grab our attention as we watch this homeless man laying in the streets reciting God's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Nathan Ayers had lived with schizophrenia, schizophrenia and perhaps other mental illnesses for many years in his life. Nevertheless, the man was an extraordinarily talented musician. He could play like no other. He had many gifts and skills. And he had, had, has a great deal, had a great deal to offer to our society. But he was stigmatized, and he became homeless because he was misunderstood as a schizophrenic, and he ended up on the streets. During his friendship with Steve Lopez, this, the reporter who was portrayed by Robert Downey Jr., he eventually finds a community where his voice can be expressed, and he can become a, 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 a gainfully a listened to voice in society, and his musical genius can be heard and understood. As Ayers speaks the words of the Lord Prayer, that we have words sin should stand out to us in new light. People with mental illnesses, with disabilities, with homelessness are no, are, are no more subject to sinning than any one of the rest of us. But yet, they are often burdened with being judged more frequently because of what we see on the outside of that person. The mentally ill, the disabled, the poor, the homeless, they can be very rich in spirit and sometimes display more humility and love than the people who have more uh, than, and who are better off than they are. James finishes his teaching on personal favoritism by pointing us back to the ultimate law of love, which we talked about last week for those who were here. Loving your neighbor as yourself. And that involves sacrifice. Listen to that word, those words again. Love your neighbor as yourself. God is calling us to sacrifice no matter the person to love them the same way that we love ourselves. James goes on to say that partiality is a sin and which is also stated back in Leviticus 19, 15, and 18 which say this, do not pervert justice, do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Now basically what James was telling us and what he was intending to lay out in these words that we read for today is a test for all of us and our faith. He's testing to see if we truly are saved, redeemed, born again Christians, if we are living a life with God, really being within our hearts. And so James gives us a test to determine whether our faith is real. So here's the test. Are you partial? What's your reaction to the poor? What's your reaction to those in need? Do you show favoritism? Now, for Wesley, our responses to those questions 
And you see, 
person affect the way we treat them? Why do we think about treating others as less than, at, why do we not think about treating others as less than as a serious sin? How often do you excuse this sin in others and in yourself? And if you were gut, gut level honest, I mean gut level honest with yourself, what areas of your life do you need to repent of or for the sin of favoritism? How does showing prejudice and favoritism endanger our witness to a non-believing culture? Some things to think about for this week. If you'll turn in your uh, hymnal to page 15 and join in our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. 